from the Montgomery County Norristown Public Library and I'm here today to make some uh, oatmeal cookies with you. Now I know that um, it's very hard sometimes to find flour in the store uh, when you're getting groceries so this is a flourless version so that hopefully you'll be able to make it at home without needing to get any extra ingredients. So um, oh, these oatmeal cookies are also gluten-free. Now you probably hear grown-ups talking a lot about gluten and what gluten is it comes from wheat and um, most normal everyday flour is made out of wheat and what happens when you bake with flour with wheat flour is when it combines with a liquid like water it creates strands of gluten which are strands of protein and um, there are some people who have a disease called celiac disease that the, when they have gluten, when they eat gluten, it actually damages the inside of their intestines. So it's, it's a very bad thing for people with celiac disease to eat fl anything with flour, wheat flour in it. So that is why there's a lot of things about gluten-free uh, products out in the marketplace because there are people who actually cannot eat the gluten, eat the wheat products. So these cookies, these oatmeal cookies that we're making today are made without flour. What we're going to do is we're going to actually make a flour out of the oatmeal. Um, so here are the ingredients that you're going to need to make this recipe. First of all, you're going to need oatmeal and you want the old fashioned kind with a quick cooking kind that comes in a, in a canister like this. You don't want the stuff in the packets in a box, the instant oatmeal, because it's not the same thing. It's all, that's already pre-cooked and it's, um, they're probably, if you have it in your house, it probably already has sugar and flavorings in it, unless you get the plain kind. So you need to use this kind that comes in a can like this. You will need some white sugar, which I have in this big container here. You will need some baking powder, not baking soda. Baking powder is a combination of baking soda, cornstarch, and cream of tartar. The cream of tartar is an acid. Um, so when baking powder or baking soda mix with an acid, it creates a chemical reaction which creates bubbles, air bubbles or gas bubbles. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, these bubbles in your cookies or cakes or whatever create um, air, air pockets which make your cookies or cakes light and fluffy. So that's why we add things. You will need some salt. You will need some butter, a stick of butter. This, uh, the recipe calls for unsalted butter. If you only have salted butter, that's okay. Just cut back, we can cut back on the amount of salt that we put in the recipe. We'll need brown sugar, light brown or dark brown, it doesn't matter. Um, we'll need vanilla, um, real vanilla if you got it. If not, you use what you got. And the recipe calls for chocolate chunks. So what I'm going to do, uh, I have chocolate chips here, and I also have um, these melting wafers to make candy. Um, so um, I'm going to chop some of this up and make half of the recipe with the chunks of chocolate and the other half of the recipe with the chocolate chips and we're going to see what the difference is. You could also, if you happen to have a chocolate bar, you can chop that up. You probably are going to need about eight ounces. I'm not sure because um, chopping volume differs um, depending upon the size of the chunks. So um, you can try that out as well. <clears throat> so um, what we're going to do first is talk about um, 
cleanliness in the kitchen. And if you've watched any of my other videos, you already know this, but uh, if you haven't, then you need to know it. First of all, you always want to have clean hands. You always want to be washing your hands. Avoid touching your face or your nose or um, sneezing or coughing into your hand. If you have to sneeze or cough, use your elbow. Just like uh, protecting yourself against the coronavirus. If you got an itch on your nose, use the back of your hand. Um, try to push your glasses if you have them up with um, something other than the palms of your hands. Um, so you start with clean hands. If, if you touch your face or touch anything that feels yucky that's not food related, wash your hands. Um, you want to wash all of your uh, work surfaces with, you can use hot water and ordinary dish soap and a, and a uh, dishcloth to just wipe down all your surfaces so that they're clean. Um, <clears throat> if you have hair that hangs in your face or that you're fussing with, pull it back out of your face so you don't have to touch it. Um, don't wear any jewelry that could fall down into uh, and get in the way of your making things. Um, if you have sleeves that are getting in the way, roll them up or change into a short sleeve shirt. And um, just basically anything that could fall into the food you're making, you want to get out of the way. <clears throat> so now the other things that you will need, you need a cup measure. You need a one-third cup measure, a one-quarter cup measure. You need a tablespoon, a teaspoon, and a half teaspoon. Those are all the measuring utensils you need. You will need a um, something, a scraper to scrape your bowl as you're mixing things um, and scrape things out of the bowl. You will need a something to lift your cookies off your baking pan when your cookies are finished baking. You will need a baking pan or two. Um, a cooling rack to put the cookies on after you've taken them out of the oven. You also need a mixer. You can either use a hand mixer or I have a are here like this um, that doesn't move and you will need a blender or a food processor. I have both but I'm going to try the blender today so everything's in the way um, so that we can take this off of the stand if we need to stir things around. The food processor um, stays on the stand when you take the top off and makes it a little bit harder. Plus my food processor only has one speed uh, which is loud and fast so um, I'd like to have a little more control with the blender that has many many speeds. So we are ready now to start baking. Of course the other thing you need is an oven and we're going to start heating that at 375 degrees. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make some flour out of some of the oats. Um, the recipe calls for two and a quarter cups of oats. So we're going to put one and a quarter cup of oats into the blender, um, blender jar. Okay, so I'm going to start by measuring, Ooh, things are falling over. Um, by measuring out the uh, flour. So we're going to put a cup and a quarter of flour in the blender to blend into a flour. And then we're going to save the other cup of oatmeal for the end. So we have the oatmeal-y um, texture of the whole oats in our cookies. So there's one, throw that in there, the blender jar, and then I need the quarter cup, there. one fourth of a cup, if you used four of these, you would have one cup. It's math, who knew? Okay, so that looks pretty good. We're gonna dump that in there. 
So now we're going to blend the oats. I'm going to start on low. Okay, you see how they're kind of powdery on the bottom and they're hardly touched on the top. So I'm just gonna take this off of here, just to be safe, and stir them around a little bit so we get everything in on the action in here so that we make it all a nice, evenly browned powder. ever open this while it's moving. Always take it off the blender uh, motor when you're stirring things up. I'm just going to give it another little stir. It looks pretty powdery, but there's still some parts that aren't as blended as others. <clears throat> going to add the other dry ingredients into here um, and blend it up again. Okay, so we need a tablespoon of cornstarch. I'm not sure why, but um, probably just to add a little more structure, a little more um, glue, if you will, to the recipe. Put that in there. We need a half teaspoon of baking powder. So you just scoop it up in there, scrape it against the little lip that they supply, sometimes supply you with, and put it in there. We need a half teaspoon of salt. Now, if you have to use salted butter, if that's all you have in your house, use uh, like a quarter teaspoon instead of a half because the salted butter, of course, already has salt in it. So we're going to put my salt in there. Okay, so we're done with all of these. We'll get these out of the way. <coughs> all right, so now we're going to blend all of those things together in here. likes to crawl up the sides. <laughs> and anytime you're using a knife or a machine in the kitchen, well, anytime you're in the kitchen, you should have an adult with you. Um, to just make sure you don't, you know, blow the place up or, you know, cut an arm off or something. Give this one more little turn. And that should be good. Okay, so this is our kind of dry ingredient flour mixture. And now we're going to mix all the wet ingredients together. Okay, so we need half a cup of butter. And if you notice on the butter stick, it has, uh, it says, um, tells you how much is a half cup somewhere. Eight tablespoons equals one half cup equals one quarter pound. So eight table, th this is eight tablespoons. Eight tablespoons is half cup. 16 tablespoons in a cup. It's a good thing to remember if you ever decide to get serious about cooking. Um, <clears throat> so this entire stick is one half cup. So you do not need to measure this in a cup. You can just stick the whole stick right into your bowl. 
and you want this to be room temperature. This one is not because it was frozen, um, so it's not quite soft enough. I have some already in the bowl that I already softened, so, um, so we'll put that aside for now. And then we're going to add the sugars. Um, so we're going to start with the white sugar, and we need a third of a cup of white sugar. <coughs> That's a third of a cup. You want to make sure it's full and level. Okay. And now we need a third cup of brown sugar. And I talked about this in a previous video, a cookie video. If you do not have brown sugar, but you have white sugar at molasses in your house, you can make your own brown sugar. <clears throat> Let me just take some white sugar, like measure out how much you need for your recipe. Uh, and then you stir in a little bit of um, molasses until you get the consistency, the squashy consistency of brown sugar. So if you notice, brown sugar is kind of damp because it has molasses in it, which is a sticky... Um, liquid. <clears throat> so we're going to squash it down. I might have a little too much in here. I'm going to take some of that off. Okay. So pack it tight in your cup and dump that into your bowl. Okay, so we got the butter and the two sugars in the bowl together. And we are going to blend that together. On. My butter is not as soft as it probably should be because I was impatient to get this done. And that may happen to you. So you may have to blend it a little bit more than you would if it was really, really soft. Um, but you want to make sure your butter and sugar is, are well combined um, and creamy because you're combining two things that are different with each other and in order to make a nice, um, a good end product, you need to make sure everything's blended together very well without uh, lumps in it. I'm just going to take a minute to scrape this down so we can continue if you see the butter is all stuck on the beater. So I'm just going to scrape this down. Okay, it's all scraped down. So I'm going to start it up here. Always begin your mixing on low speed because um, the higher speed creates friction and that melts your butter and it changes the consistency of your dough. So you want to make sure that it's blended without being melted. Um, believe it or not, it makes a difference. Okay, so that looks pretty good in there. Yep, make sure. Your sugar is all the way mixed up in with the butter, and there's no butter streaks in there, no clumps of sugar. So now we're going to add the egg. <clears throat> so to crack an egg, um, you need to tap it on the surface, on a flat surface, until it gets a dent like this. So you've got your dent. You're going to put your thumbs into the dent, oh. Push it. and then you're going to pry the shell apart gently until the egg drops out. And I always wash my hands after I touch raw egg because number one, it feels icky, and number two, um, raw eggs can sometimes carry a bacteria called salmonella, and you don't want to be dragging that around in your kitchen while you're cooking. Um, try to keep your work surfaces clean after you've used raw egg. And now we're gonna blend that all up together. Again, on low speed. Now, we're trying to mix a liquid and a fat together, and 
you may have heard the expression oil and water don't mix and uh, that is because fats are denser than liquid and um, we have to kind of incorporate air into there um, to get them all to mix together and be happy. So we want to make sure that egg is blended in there very, very well. And um, I'm going to scrape this down and uh, keep blending. Continuing to blend. I want to make sure everything is completely mixed together and smooth. Um, so that we have a nice, uh, nice cookie when we're finished. Okay, we are supposed to add some vanilla at this point too. Okay, so we need a teaspoon of vanilla. And this is the last of my vanilla that I have right now. So I'm hoping I have enough. And I ordered some more and it's on its way. So hopefully the next time we bake together, I'll have some new vanilla. Okay, I'm just gonna dump this in with the egg sugar mixture. Okay, so now the vanilla is down in there. Getting all mixed in and happy. And you see the egg is pretty much mixed in with the butter and sugar. Okay, that's mixed in pretty well. So we're going to go ahead and add in the stuff that was in the blender. Okay, I'm just going to add this a little bit at a time. Break that down a little bit. I'm going to finish mixing that up. That looks pretty well mixed. Okay, I'm measuring in the last of the oatmeal. The last cup. One cup. And these are going to be the kind of chewy, crunchy bits that you get in oatmeal cookies. And I'm going to mix this by hand, um, just because it's easier. Just get that all mixed in and incorporated. Now this is stiffening up the dough. everything down and pressing it together till it is all evenly distributed in the batter. Okay. So now what I'd like to do is um, do kind of an experiment. I want to make just some plain oatmeal without the chocolate. I'm just going to do like maybe four of those and then um, we're going to divide what's left of the dough in half and I'm going to put chocolate chips in one and I'm going to put um, the baking wafers in the other one. Now the recipe calls for you to use parchment paper or a silicone mat, which I happen to own, um, onto your baking sheet and that just um, keeps the cookies from sticking. If you don't have either of those things, which I don't imagine you do, you can just lightly grease the pan with either uh, spray oil like Pam, or you can put a few drops of cooking oil on the pan and using a clean hand just kind of smear it around to cover the tray. Or if you have shortening or lard, you can um, spread that around just a little bit, just a, you know, like a 
quarter size piece and just spread it around or even butter. Um, you can grease your pan with that. So we're going to start with um, the plain. I'm going to do a few plain cookies and it says um, rounded tablespoon. I'm just kind of eyeball it. If you really want to get um, technical, you can measure it. Same difference. Um, I've been doing this so long I can sort of guess by looking. So you have your spoon, you need another spoon to just kind of pry that out of there. Where's my pan? There. Okay, so I'm going to do maybe four like this just to see how the plain ones turn out. And um, because I have not made this recipe before, I'm experimenting on you. So rounded tablespoons. That one might have a little bit too much in there. Try to keep them all the same size. Approximately two inches apart because with the butter in it they're most likely going to spread and especially if they don't have the structure of the wheat gluten um, to hold it firm that might they might spread out okay so now I'm going to take half of this and put it in another bowl you don't have to do this at home this is just my experiment because I'm curious and Curiosity in the kitchen is often a good thing, as long as you don't blow anything up. Um, so, just about that much is about half. Okay, so the recipe calls for a whole cup of um, chocolate chunks. So, because I've cut the recipe in half, I only need half that amount, or one half cup. So this one's going to get the chocolate chunks that I already chopped up. That one I'm just going to mix those around. Um, the reason I want to try the chocolate chunks is because in the comments with the recipe, people said that the chocolate chunks help hold the cookie together. And I want to see how true that is. Um, that the chocolate chips have uh, maybe less fat in them or something in them to keep them from losing their shape when they bake. Um, so um, we're going to see, okay. we're going to see the difference. So that's that. Now we need a half cup of chocolate chips for the other half of the Yeah, I do a lot of baking. That's why I have giant containers of everything. chocolate chips in here, like I did in the other, um, and we'll see how it goes. That is a lot of chocolate. <laughs> Can you ever have too much chocolate? I say no. Then again, it's been a long time since I've had a stomach ache after Halloween. So, okay, I think that's mixed pretty well. So we're going to continue with our um, rounded tablespoons. Turn out. 
So these are all the chocolate chip ones. Now I'm going to um, do the chocolate chunk. And I had to prepare another pan because obviously they're not all going to fit in this one. And I only have the one silicone mat, so I oiled, I spray oiled the other one. Stick these in the oven and continue on with the other pan while these are baking. Okay, so these go in the oven for 12 to 14 minutes until the tops are lightly browned. Okay, here we go. Set my timer for 12 and we'll check it after 12. Always set your timer for the least amount of time that the recipe calls for because you can always continue baking if they're not done but you can't unbake when you've overbaked so it's easier and better to be cautious and um, and check it out because everybody's oven has uh, their own little quirks some ovens run cooler than other ovens some ovens run hotter um, we would hope that it, your oven would be fairly accurate, but that's not always the case. So um, the time is just a guideline for how long. And you know, you should always just be uh, checking whatever you're baking. Anyway, hopefully your oven has a little window you can look through and see how things are going. Um, so that you don't have to open the oven and let in the cold air um, so that it interrupts the baking cycle. So, okay. I'm almost done with this. Hopefully these will be delicious. I have not tried this recipe yet. You guys are my guinea pigs here. Um, trying out new things. But what else are you going to do when you're uh, stuck at home, not able to go out and do very much? And baking and cooking, that's a great skill to have for when you grow up and you move away and you have to make your own food. And because eating out all the time is expensive and food often tastes much better when you make it yourself. You make it at home. Not always. I mean, some people just can't get how to bake or cook, but it just takes a little patience and a little attention and a lot of desire. So hopefully um, you'll have some success with this as well. Got the cookies out of the oven after 12 minutes. I checked them at 10 and they weren't quite um, brown enough. If you notice, the ones on the silicone mat didn't get as brown as the ones on the open tray. So uh, that's kind of interesting. So they've had to cool for five minutes in the pan and now I'm going to check and see what they look like inside. So this is the plain one. Look at that, how nice and brown it is. And um, Seems to be fine. I'm going to try a little tiny piece. Mmm, pretty good. They're crispy. Not as chewy as what I would hope uh, oatmeal cookie to be. But that's okay. You can have crispy cookie. You just have to dunk it in milk. That's all. Okay, now these are um, the regular chocolate chips. And these are a little smushier, a little, they might be a little chewier. So um, I'm going to try a little bite of that one. These came out softer. So the chocolate does help. And now this is the chocolate chunk, which if you notice, kind of spread out a little bit more than the chocolate chip. 
and they're not as, they're kind of crispy too. Yeah, they're not as chewy. So my verdict is chocolate chips are the way to go. But seeing that these held together fine without the chocolate makes me think that you could put raisins or dried cranberries in there and they would be perfectly fine. So you can play around with this recipe. You can add, maybe you want to add some chopped nuts in there. Um, give it a try with, you know, maybe like a half cup of chopped nuts in the recipe. Or instead of the chocolate chips, you can add a cup of raisins or dried cranberries. Or half cup of chocolate, half cup of raisins, craisins, whatever. And um, you could probably fool around with this a little bit and um, make some different combinations of ingredients in the cookies. Enjoy!